If you're looking for an all-electric vehicle that has the same attitude as a Dodge TRX or a Ford Raptor R, well, this is the one you've been waiting for. It's the Hummer EV. It's an all-electric, all ridiculous, and all kind of awesome EV pickup. Today we're going to check out all the details and then take it on an adventure. That's coming up right now on Driving Sports TV. This is the 2022 GMC Hummer SUT Edition 1. It's an all-electric truck with features and styling that is guaranteed to turn some heads. Since the Edition 1 models like we have here are all sold out, if you are in the market for one of these, check out the Hummer EV3X. It basically replaces the Edition 1 in the lineup. Pricing of this 2022 model we're looking at today is $110,293 US dollars, including destination. In terms of styling, I have to give this thing props. Everything from the two-tone paint to the almost cartoonish use of exterior hardware to the on-screen graphics that look straight off an Xbox. This is truck design turned all the way to 11. With the Hummer EV, the truck was designed around the powertrain and what a powertrain it is. Three electric motors providing up to 1,000 combined horsepower and up to 11,500 pounds of wheel torque. No, I did not make that number up. That is what GMC says. One of the electric motors is placed in the front. The other two are in the back. This produces mind-bending performance figures. Zero to 60 in three seconds. The ability to push 100% of motor torque to a single wheel. It also has a towing capacity of 7,500 pounds, which isn't bad. Charging is a big issue with electric vehicles. To make life with the Hummer as easy as possible, it has an ultra-fast charging capability. GMC claims up to 100 miles of range can be charged in as little as 10 minutes. Total range fully charged is estimated at 329 miles. More than just a vehicle, this GMC Hummer is the first product from GM using the new Ultium battery system. So it's not just a product, it's a showcase for GMC's future. This is, in all intents and purposes, a concept car you can actually buy and drive today, which is nuts. Up front, you get additional storage. This hit a button hidden down here. Yeah, there it is. This test vehicle also has the removable roof panels. This is where you would store them if you wanna go open air motoring. Let's see if we can pop this off. That one, that one. But because it's currently winter in the Pacific Northwest, yeah, we're not doing that today. Believe it or not, these are 18 inch wheels and we have these huge mud terrain tires. These are Goodyear Wranglers and they have big chunky treads. Um, actually, are they snow rated? I don't think we have a peak rating on these ones. Nope, we do not, but they are in a 30670R18 fitment. In the back, you get a five foot bed because this is of course a lifestyle truck, not a work truck. We also have big honk and recovery points back here, a tow hitch with wiring. It also has GMC's trick tailgate, which allows for you to put it down normal or you can't expose a step. Pretty neat, right? This also has the kicker sound system built into it. So as if you roll up in this and you're not already the life of the party, well, you can bring the tunes too. As for the bed here, it does have a power retractable tonneau cover, which is very practical. You also get back here AC power with 400 watt maximum uh, and a handle to get up and down easy. I'm king of the world. And there we go. Now let's check out the second row. Lift it up and you get extra storage. You also get, ah yes, the level two charging cable.
You know, it kind of, it's like being a little bit in the future. We have this whole glass panel roof, which lets in so much light. Uh, everything is very angular. It's a very unique look. Uh, it's actually really cool. I, I honestly, I thought this thing would be super dorky, but like in person, it's pretty awesome. Uh, anyway, down here we do have aircon for the second row. We also get three stages of heat on these seats, plus a USB-C and a USB-A, plus a little bin down here to put your stuff, which is nice. Uh, do we get an armrest? Yes, armrests with integrated cup holders. Of course, we've got mud mats down here too. Oh, and AC power, yeah. The seat is a little bit firm and it doesn't support very well, but you know, it's the second row of a truck. What do you expect, right? Okay, here we are inside the Hummer EV, finally. So my first impression here, I am shocked that they actually took the same vibe as the original Hummer and they've just moved it forward what feels like 50 years, <laughs> 50 years into the future. This is very much like the old Hummer, even with the whole kind of, I don't know what you would call that, the big lever, gear shifter, the huge center console, the very wide feel for everything. Man, and of course it even has the three wipers up front because it's such a wide and narrow windshield. Man, if this doesn't get you seen on the road, I, I don't know what will. We get these two gorgeous screens. This one is, of course, the main gauge cluster. It changes depending on what drive mode you're in. Uh, we also have this display over here, which is a touch screen. It's fairly responsive. There's a slight lag that I would like to see a little less of, but it's definitely usable. And when we switch our drive modes, we get these just insane animations. And if you're looking at going, wow, that looks like a video game. Yeah, it's actually powered by the Unreal Engine. So. It is a video game, essentially. I mean, I could just do this all day. I can imagine if you actually owned one of these trucks, seeing such complicated animations would be a little annoying after a while. I don't know. I prefer things to be a little bit more cut and dry myself, uh, especially when it comes to modes. The infotainment screen does support Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, both wired and wireless. Now we do have this steering wheel here. It's wrapped in leather. It does have the Super Cruise uh, insert, which means that this will illuminate depending on our current cruise control system. And for those who are unaware, Super Cruise is a semi-autonomous mode, but it's still only level two. So that does require driver intervention at a moment's notice. Uh, but on geofenced roads, you're actually able to drive this with no hands. It is a hands-free system, again, on geofenced highways so not every highway is going to work like the highway that goes by my house not geofenced but once i get over to gig harbor that's geofenced um, we'll try that out as we go on our adventure a little bit later there's lots of buttons here and i love the fact that they actually have physical switch gear for a number of the functions uh, the seats are both heated and ventilated uh, we have all the aircon right along here and below that, we have some more vehicle-specific functions, plus heated steering wheel button. I guess they didn't have room up above. But we have a rear locker, we have a front locker, we can turn traction control off, and we have some auto park functions as well. These buttons do feel kind of cheap, very chintzy plastic, not, not a fan of that. Even the audio button just feels kind of cheap. Uh, for as much money as this is, they could have gone with maybe some more metal or possibly a rubberized insert to kind of give it a little bit better touch impression to the fingers. We have a brake controller down here. If you're going to tow, it is a maximum of 7,500 pounds, which I just want to point out is equal to our Ford Ranger, which only cost $44,000. Below all the buttons, uh, we get a inductive charger down there, plus a USB-C, USB-A. Then we have the big shifty knob here. And then below that, we have something that controls all of our modes our air suspension, which is an option on lower trims of the Hummer EV. Uh, this one, it comes standard. And then also the crab walk and rear wheel functions, which we can turn on and off. What's that button do? I think that's what I'm gonna be asking a lot of is, what does this button do? <laughs> that is 
There's going to be a lot of that, so just bear with me, okay? Using this dial here, we can, of course, get all the different drive modes, and there are many of them. Again, we'll dive into those as we drive. There is an option down here for uh, single pedal driving as well, where this is kind of the shortcut to it. Uh, so if you want that whole kind of EV single pedal driving experience, that's where you can engage that. Uh, on this main gauge cluster, we do have some things we can kind of customize as we go through different menu options. We can see pitch, roll, energy usage, lots of good information, especially if you're going off-road. And this also will tell you like, you know, your, the distance that you have remaining. Right now we have 276 miles. Uh, this vehicle has been driven a bunch since it was charged last, as well as how much you're replenishing into the system, which is neat. And talking about recharging, this is a very large battery and it has a very fast charging capability. Um, but I need to point out that you're only going to get optimal charging speeds if you precondition your battery. And there's a shortcut to preconditioning in that if you use the built-in nav system and you target a charging station, it'll precondition the battery on the way to the charging station. If you don't do that, you're not going to have a good charging experience. So the seats feel pretty good. I got lots of power adjustments. They are heated. They are cooled. We should have everything we need to spend a very long day in this rig. So let's stop talking and let's start driving. So it's been a little bit of time. I went and got some coffee. It's been 49 minutes and we've charged now from about 40% of total capacity on the battery pack all the way up to 83%. Now the peak charging rate that I saw with this was around 250 kilowatts, uh, which this is up to a 350. So it's kind of nice to be able to find one of these high capacity units. So according to the gauge cluster, we have 280 miles, which should be more than enough to get to Ellensburg, to take the Ridge Road, up to the University of Washington Observatory, which I think is gonna be fun. We should encounter some rocks, some snow. We have enough miles now, so I'm gonna go ahead and unplug and we're gonna hit the highway. So here we are on the freeway heading to the mountains. Now I just charged up. I hit about 83, 84% because after that, it really takes a long time to get that last little bit of charge. And we do have a schedule to stick to today. Our current range is showing us 277 miles. Um, I have the trip reset and we're gonna see kind of how many miles we chew up on today's adventure. I'm hoping we can get from here, North Bend, Washington, all the way to Ellensburg and then up a ridge road to the University of Washington Observatory. Uh, that is a nice mountain road kind of adventure, and I think it'll be very well suited for this vehicle. So we've been rolling along here for about 30 minutes. Um, the mileage that we've lost seems to reflect that. We're at 217 miles of range still. And according to navigation, we have 43 miles to get to Ellensburg. And one thing I really like about this Google Maps integration is it also shows me my battery life when we get to our destination, which is gonna be 49%. Now, keeping in mind that this truck does have a range of 350 miles, that's still pretty good. I mean, that's gonna be plenty for what we need today. We still have quite a long ways to go, so I'm gonna go ahead and engage the Super Cruise semi-autonomous system to do the driving for me. Now, it's really easy to use here. All I have to do is turn on cruise control with a button down here, and then hit the cruise control, the Super Cruise button. This turns green, and now I know that it's doing the driving. Now, it's funny because in our tests for these level two systems, very often we'll take our hands off the wheel and say, oh, don't take your hands off the wheel. But this one is actually one where legit you can take your hands off the wheel. It is an advanced level two system. So what does level two mean? Well, that means that the driver needs to be able to take over at a moment's notice. And because of that requirement, it is watching my face to make sure that I am looking at the road. And in fact, if I cover my face here and it can't see it, in a moment, it should start complaining. See, that's where it starts complaining and it'll now shut off the system after fair warning. And it actually vibrated my seat before it did that. So now I've taken control again. It'll now re-engage the system. 
Um, systems like this one, which are level two, are a lot of car makers have them. Um, Ford has their Blue Cruise. Actually, it's changing lanes for me because it noticed that the truck in front of me isn't going fast enough. That's fun. <laughs> um, so let's talk about the other vehicles that provide this level of functionality. Well, Ford has it with their Blue Cruise, GM has it with Super Cruise, and Tesla has it with that system that they call full self-driving, which is obviously not actually full self-driving. So talking about the vehicle on the highway here, been driving for a little while, and the seat is pretty comfortable. It is a little on the firm side, but I do have lots of adjustments, which is nice. Visibility is weird out of this vehicle because out of the front window, you have this tiny little piece of glass and it's almost vertical, which also makes for a lot of wind noise. You just get wind noise all over the place with this thing. Uh, further, that back window, it's so vertical that it reflects this whole display on the back window at night. So when I look into the back window, I see the navigation system. Again, a little bit weird. It's almost like they should have raked that just a little bit so that wouldn't be an issue. Uh, but that said, it's still a pretty comfortable place to be. It's a fun interior, it has lots of functionality. I mean, some of the plastics aren't the highest of quality and there's some goofiness like this thing. It just doesn't look very good. And then of course these huge vents, uh, but only half of them are actually a vent. I mean, there's just a lot of like head scratching stuff on the inside of this vehicle. But, you know, given the, uh, it started to do an auto lane change and I flipped the lever and now it canceled the lane change halfway through. I don't know, that just doesn't seem like well thought out functionality. Anyway, um, on the freeway here, this is actually pretty fun to drive. I have no problems with it, but I'm really looking forward to the off-road adventure that's to come real shortly. Highway driving, pretty good. Very comfortable. Super Cruise, very impressive. But there's another thing that this vehicle does and that is it has a mode called the WTF mode. It stands for Watts to Freedom. <laughs> so to engage it, we flick down twice. There we go. I get a sound effect. It's priming the systems. It's lowering. Okay, continue. Vehicle is now lowering. Once I confirmed, I want to enter Watts to Freedom mode. It's gonna prime the systems uh, for maximum power output. Here we go, three, two, one, go. Mother of God, and 60. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Nearly 10,000 pounds moving that quick. That, ladies and gentlemen, is insane. And just go right into it again. What? <laughs> Which is cool. So it takes a moment to prime the system, but once you're engaged in that mode, you can do this all day long. Sixty. Woo! <laughs> you do that all day long. Did lose a few miles of range with each launch, and it does show on the torque gauge here up to twelve thousand pound-feet of torque. I don't know how what math they used to get 12,000 pounds, but man, it's still cool. So now to change out of that mode, I just basically flick it to a different drive mode and go back to normal and we're good. As we're heading towards the ridge, uh, we have this really nice little strip of pavement where I can really kind of feel how this thing handles the road. And it is a big beast, of course. This weighs over 9,000 pounds, but it does have air suspension which helps keep things pretty solid in the corners. Let's see, roll in, yeah. Now, of course, it is wearing mud terrain tires. These aren't really designed for aggressive driving on the cement, but you know, considering the amount of heft that we have here, I'd say it's actually doing pretty good. It drives better than most trucks. Yeah, there we go, and the throttle in, wow. The big thing is just so much power if you tip in that throttle. As we go into the corner, yeah, you can kind of feel that weight, but add a little throttle, it pulls it right out. It is big and you do feel the weight, but it does the best it can to fight those physics and it uses that air suspension and just all that power to pull you through. Now, the mud terrains, well, <laughs> they're not ideal for cement driving. They do generate a lot of noise on the road, uh, but you know, this is, 
this is an off-road machine, or at least that's what it looks like. So these tires are appropriate. And though we're not gonna encounter any mud today, they should provide good traction uh, for the dirt and rocks that we're gonna be hitting. And the big trick here is the fact that this thing accelerates so quickly, you have to be really careful not to hit that throttle too hard. And it's funny, there's like no engine noise. You hear a little re re but that's about it. Now there are several drive modes here. You can flick through. We got, uh, let's see, my mode, normal, off-road, terrain, tow haul, and normal. So there is no like sport mode, but that's okay. I mean, this thing, uh, I, <laughs> it has the WTF mode and I think that is enough. It's actually really fun to drive. You don't have that skittish back end like you get on so many other trucks. And the turning radius on a dime, thanks to that four wheel steering. I have to say on highway, on side roads, this thing is pretty impressive. And in fact, I like it way better than I thought I would. Cause you know, I mean, it's a ridiculous vehicle, but it actually does some things really well. So the air suspension isn't gonna be standard on all trims, but I think that it really does transform this vehicle because it is so heavy and it counteracts a lot of those issues. So this road is interesting. It's dirt and then it turns to ice and then snow and then back to dirt again. I think it's really kind of a, uh, it's an indication of what we're gonna be facing today. I'm expecting this road to be completely frozen over. It is currently 20 degrees and it was overnight nine degrees. So any water that's out here is likely going to be mostly frozen. It's possible that in some of the sunny areas it might be a little bit muddy, but probably not a lot of that. Probably absolutely solid ice. And we haven't had snow for a while, so any fluffy snow you see on the side of the road, yeah, that's rock hard ice. So we don't want to hit that. I just want to note that at this point, we have done a bunch of filming back and forth. I've done a few hard launches. I'm now down to 120 miles of range, but I think we'll be okay here. So this is absolutely solid ice. And one nice thing about this vehicle is it's not a part-time four-wheel drive system. This is a full-time all-wheel drive system or full-time four-wheel drive system with a front and rear locker. So we have a lot of stuff to play with. Now the tires here are of course big, chunky mud terrains, uh, and they are not ice and snow tires. They are not studded, uh, but this is what the manufacturer sent us. And of course, we just drove an hour and a half to get out here. Uh, wouldn't want to have studs and on you know bare pavement, really. Okay, this is going to be the first kind of challenge here, because this is like ice. Can it get up? Oh yeah, I think it can. There we go. It's so good at shifting power around where it needs to go. And of course it has power for miles. I mean, it's, it's almost unfathomable how powerful this vehicle is. Of course, that doesn't prevent us from trying to avoid slipping off the edge of this ridge road because yeah, high centering this beast, good luck getting it off. <laughs> In fact, that's one reason why we didn't even bother bringing the Ranger as a rescue vehicle is, I mean, this thing, it's so heavy, I don't think the Ranger could do much to uh, yank it off of anything, frankly. Okay, it's, it feels a little sketchy, and one of the main reasons I did pick this particular course is the fact that it's a big, wide open area. Although we do have some sagebrush pointing it on the side, and some of those branches on those bushes are really sharp. Uh, so we do have to be careful about scratching the manufacturer's vehicle, but I think we'll be fine today. Uh, but this is a big boy, so we do have to watch out. Ah, wow, that is, that is ice. That is solid ice. Come on, there we go. <laughs> into the ice, into the snow we go. Can I do a donut here? Ah. Kind of cheats when you have four wheel steering, doesn't it? <laughs> Traction control kicking in. Still, admirable job. Okay, donuts in the snow, that's pretty fun. Uh, but I am curious about how much control I have on this stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch this into a uh, different drive mode here. Let's do the off-road mode. Put it into drive. And uh, we're actually raising up the suspension. We're ready. Should optimize for a little wheel spin. 
let's just see what it can do. Now we are, this is not soft snow, this is very firm ice. <laughs> wow, the suspension does a great job of soaking up this really, really rough surface. Okay, TC is off, now let's give it a try. See if we can get some sweet slow-mo. Yes, snow machine, what? <laughs> Okay, <laughs> let's let's continue on now. It's moving along here. Uh, we got uh, 107 miles left on the range, which yeah, that'll be interesting. I think once we get down to 50, that's where no matter where we are on this course, we're turning around and going back. <laughs> you know, just like I normally fuel up with petrol before heading out into the woods, even if I've just filled up and then drive an hour and I'm about to head into the woods, normally I'll fill up with petrol right before heading out. Probably should have done the same with the electric here, but I was like, no, nope, no, nope, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. So we'll see. Luckily, we don't actually have a lot of miles to cover here. We just have very slow progress due to this ice. As long as this stays level, we'll do fine. You know, at first when I hit the ice, I was very nervous, but now that I've had a chance to kind of fling this vehicle around a little bit, it's actually really predictable. Um, of course, no traction control helps on sheets of ice, um, especially ones with absolute edges here. Yeah. So I'm gonna find that rut and just keep momentum up the hill. Okay, now we're good. Yeah, so far this is doing great. The traction control is really doing its job and the weight, though there is a lot of it, you have to respect it. It is not that hard to manage on a road surface like this, even with these mud terrain tires that are not perfectly suited. And of course we have plenty of ground clearance to deal with some of these deeper ruts that keep popping up. So would you take this vehicle on an adventure like this? So oh, yeah, absolutely. I would totally do this again. Uh, no problems at all. Now. Once we actually hit a steep hill, then it's probably gonna be an issue simply because of physics. A uh, spinning rubber tire without any studs on it, trying to get up an incline that is covered in ice, that is going to be something that no vehicle can get up without the appropriate tires. Uh, so we'll just keep pressing on until we have an issue or we get our mileage uh, too low and then panic, run back to town. So this GMC Hummer, I knew it would be ridiculous, but I thought I would hate it, and I don't. <laughs> be simply because the platform has so much capability. Yeah, it's wrapped in a uh, Tonka truck style, you know, straight from the Xbox Halo game kind of uh, exterior. But you know, if you look at the technology, it's really impressive how fast it recharges, the 350 miles of maximum range, uh, even just the all-wheel drive capability of this powertrain, it's all very impressive. Of course, if you're not into this kind of crazy styling, they will have a Silverado version of this, uh, and I'm really looking forward to the release of that vehicle. Now, in terms of recovery gear, what do we have today? We have a shovel because honestly, I don't know what else we could possibly use to recover this thing. We do not have a vehicle big enough to pull a 9,000 plus pound vehicle out of a high centered situation. So work with what we got. Oh man, that was pretty awesome. So if things do get into a pickle, we do have both front and rear lockers on this thing, but so far, haven't needed them. This is not really that kind of adventure. Another thing I really wanna talk about on this vehicle is the camera system, because it's very cool. I'm gonna stop here. Up in the main menu, you have a camera button. We hit that. We have the standard surround view here, and with a view of both behind and in front of us with tracking lines, which is kinda of neat. 
Uh, it knows because I'm in drive to put the paint the lines in front of me. If I'm in reverse, it'll paint the lines behind me. That is pretty nifty. And of course, we have a, just a big, big selection of different views. But my favorite view on this vehicle is one you don't even see on the outside. That is the underbody view. Now, it does look a little dirty right now because we've been splashing through some icy puddles. Just hit the button and it cleans it off. Looks like something a little harder might be stuck. Oh, that's probably a piece of ice. That's not going anywhere. As we're rolling, these are live cameras actually under the vehicle. They're not just like reading the road ahead of us and painting it. This is like legitimate what is going on underneath the vehicle. I think that is just so cool. And if I want to see both front and back, yeah, I can do that too. Perfect for traversing over very challenging obstacles. Although, don't really need it today, but it is kind of neat to have. So this is looking like this could be our first obstacle. It's a hill that normally I would not be worried about. But when it's covered in ice, that's when I start to worry about things. And that is absolutely covered in ice. Uh, thankfully, we have very wide tires. We also have you know, a good four-wheel drive system, good traction control system. <laughs> Let's just see if we can get up this. I'm pretty glad to see this hill here covered in ice. Uh, and the reason is, is that this is a hill that I feel is safe to slide on. If we start to get something steeper, that might be a problem. So this, this will give us a really good test as to how slippery this stuff is. Oh, and it's definitely, oh, it's working it. Oh, it's doing a really good job actually. It's just, it's kicking in that traction control. The little gauge cluster over here is telling me uh, what wheel is spinning, but it's finding that traction. One, <laughs> one wheel had traction in the back and we are still climbing. Ah, just going slow. My th throttle is almost all the way in and we're just, oh, we're sliding now. This is where I got to steer and add throttle to try to Stop my slide. I'm gonna get a little off the ice, hug the corner just a little bit. I am actually accelerating forward to stop the slide as much as possible, trying to regain control. Can only do so much. Oop. Given that, I think we're done here. <laughs> If that hill is not a sign that we are done here, I don't know what is. You know, it is an incredible machine. It might look goofy like a toy truck, but you know what? That's okay. They're going to make a Silverado EV that has the same awesome powertrain, and I cannot wait to drive it. Even though this thing looks goofy like it's out of a cartoon or out of a video game, you know what? I'm glad vehicles like this exist because they are fun. That's the end of the story. For Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthit. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, share our videos. We make them for you, and I hope you enjoy them. So now we're gonna turn this around, throw it on a charger, and get some burritos.